Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is still September 12th, 2024. And as promised, I told you guys in my nail video, I know that it's uploading so you guys don't know this yet because this video is shorter, it's going to upload first. I told you guys that if I could figure out a way to show you guys how we went to London for 100, and I'm gonna give you an exact total, okay? In my nail video, I said $192 because it was easier. But the exact total is $191.23, okay, for two people round trip, okay? So um, I'm going to show you the information for going from New Jersey to London, okay? And then I will talk to you guys about going from Phoenix to New Jersey after that, okay? I don't have the paper to show you, but I mean, I always tell you guys, you see the name of my channel, and I review things and then I just share the information. Okay, so um, I'm just upfront and honest. And that was just the reason why my husband came up with the name of that channel. Okay, so if you see this in writing, then you know the next thing I'm going to tell you is true. Okay, so um, we're going to jump right into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to angle the camera down and then I'll probably be just talking to you guys from behind my phone at that point because it'll be easier for me to move the pages. Okay, so a lot of people ask us, does it cost thousands and thousands of dollars to go out of town, especially if you go out of the country? And the answer is no. Okay, it does not cost that much. And this is exactly why I'm going to show you on paper and then maybe I'll get a little bit more into detail afterwards. So I'll kind of angle the camera back up and we might have a little discussion afterwards. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and look at the papers first. Okay. So give me a second and I'm going to turn the papers around and I'm going to check and make sure you guys can see them. Okay, so I know that this is at an awkward angle, but this was the next best thing to me trying to do a PowerPoint, but this was just a lot easier once I finally got the pages to print out. Okay, so as you can see up at the top there, the total started off at $1,324.40. Okay, so there was our flight. Those are the actual days that we went. At the very top, it shows that there was two travelers. There was an airline confirmation number, obviously, and I um, blocked out some of the information because it was personal information. But as you can see, this is from Newark. You know that's in New Jersey, the airport that's there, going to London, and then it has the arrow showing coming back. Okay, so it shows, um, I'm going to try and point to it without hitting the uh, ring light that this was next day arrival and it was non-stop okay so then it shows the uh, type of airplane we were on we were on a Boeing and then it shows what was included and uh, that we were in economy and all the type of stuff okay so this is a key thing that's important okay so it says included in airfare and I do have an arrow pointing to that so it says checked bags I want to make sure you guys know that myself and my husband only had one check bag each okay so we had about three or four options i think it was four and this was option two okay so option two through chase travel when we went and picked united for the flights only get the option to include the second check bag i'm, not, I'm sorry the first first check bag not the second is what i meant to say okay so we each only had one check bag and then it says the carry-on bag. So yes, with United, you pay for your carry-on bag and then you also pay for your seats. And then it shows that we were able to exchange the tickets. However, we were not able to receive a refund if anything happened. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next page. And remember, this is including both of us. Okay, so this page is going to be a little awkward because if I angle the uh, ring light down anymore, there was a shadow. You can still see kind of a shadow casting. So let's start at the top of the page and we're, we're going to go down and move the page up. Okay. That's just the easiest thing for me to do instead of changing the zoom and then something happened. Let me see if I can get it to focus a little bit more and I'm sick. Okay. So I'm still trying to get better. So sorry about my voice. It might go in and out. Okay. So I'm um, like I said, obviously it shows that we are in United. I just told you guys that. And then it shows again what was included okay so that was the first person so here's the second person and again it says check bags 
which there was only one per person, and then to carry on the seat and to be able to exchange a ticket. Okay, so there was no refund offered, and it shows Traveler 1. You guys know my name is Lorraine. If you guys did not know that, hi. Um, I have a walk and talk, and on there, all my walk and talks have my name in the title. Okay, so you can see Traveler 2. I didn't want to have my husband's name um, out there to respect his privacy, but the first letter of his first name is with the letter D. So you could see there really was two travelers, and it said on the first page as well. Okay, so it goes down to important flight information, all that good stuff. It keeps going, and there we are right here. Okay, so payment summary. Okay, so you see where it says 58,210 points. Okay, so I had 38,210 points on my Chase Sapphire Reserve card. Okay, and this is the itinerary from that card. Okay, so I went through Chase Travel like I said, from that card. And you're probably wondering, okay, so where did your other 20,000 points come from? Well, they had kept um, giving me like offers saying, oh, you're pre-approved for these, you know, three or four credit cards, check it out. And I really just didn't want to do it because I have a lot of credit cards, but I thought we're getting ready to go on a trip. And the Chase Freedom Unlimited card offered a bonus of if you spent $500 in three months, which I mean, come on out, that is not difficult to do. You just switch what you're using to pay, which would be that card, the Freedom Unlimited, right? All your bills. Okay, so we don't tell anybody to spend any new money. You just change what you're paying with. Okay, so your utilities, your car payments, your cell phone bills, all of it, just switch it to the new card if you get approved. Okay, or if there's a bonus offer on your current card. Okay, so... $200 is 20,000 points. Okay, so if you were to, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to see if I can explain this correctly. Okay, like I said, I, I showed you guys the points. You see it there, the 58,210. If you take that and divide it by 100, okay, this is where I might be wrong and I don't have a separate calculator, which that would have been nice, but I'm going to try. Okay, so that turns into that should be five hundred eighty two dollars ten cents okay so you take your amount of points you divide it by 100 whatever the number is you put the dollar sign in front so the two hundred dollars on the chase freedom unlimited was offered in points so that's easier for me to explain so it was twenty thousand points divided by 100 is 200 and then you throw the dollar sign in front and that makes the 20,000 points. So 20,000 points plus the 38 I had totaled the 58 you see there. Okay, so the remaining price up to this point, keep in mind I'm not done yet, was $451.23. Okay, and then it shows it was billed to a card and Chase Sapphire Reserve is a, I'm going to point to it, hopefully I don't hit the ring light. It is a visa. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. So like I said, this is a real printout of our trip. Okay. Now, Chase Sapphire Reserve offers a travel credit. And before we go to the third page, um, I want to explain this because I forgot. This is not the other video that I made when I was doing my nails. Okay. So with Chase, with certain cards, and the Chase Freedom Unlimited card is one of them, you can do a thing called combining points okay because you're probably wondering you're like wait you just named off two credit cards so how did you get your points together so I'm gonna make sure I explain that first okay so how did I get the 20,000 points over to the 38,000 on the Chase Sapphire Reserve and like I said it's called combining points okay so you go into your Chase Freedom Unlimited card and then you go to it will say ways to redeem redeem and use mean the same thing Okay, and there should be an option of combining points and you can send your points to another one of your Chase credit cards. Okay, and you have to just make sure that you can send it to that type of card and it just so happens that I could send it to a Chase Sapphire Reserve card. Okay, now the points aren't worth any more, but they aren't worth any less. And it happens like within a matter of seconds. It should not take longer, two to three minutes is kind of long for your points to transfer when you're transferring them to yourself or when you're transferring them to someone else that lives in your house. Okay, so if I remember correctly, with combining points, that's exactly what it's called with Chase, you can also send your points to one other person that lives in your house. So let's say they have more points. Okay, but um, in this case, I'm the account holder. 
and my husband is an authorized user. So I just sent my Chase Freedom Unlimited bonus points that I earned when I first got approved and I combined it with my points and that sent it over to the Chase Sapphire Reserve and that's how it got to be the 58,210 points all in one place. Okay, let me tap this, I think, because the lighting, it's um, later in the day, so the lighting's kind of off. Um, looks like it's getting darker, huh? Okay, hopefully that helped a little bit. Okay, so that was just to explain to you, that's how I got them all on one card, okay? Then I went in and I did the transaction you're seeing now on paper. Okay, so that was the re remaining amount. Now, Chase Sapphire Reserve has a $300 annual travel credit. There is a reason why this card has such a high annual uh, fee. But when you look at everything you get, I mean, it's it's worth it. Okay, because you also get with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you get the Priority Pass Select membership. Okay, and um, that membership starts off at $99. There's three different ones. The top one is $469, I believe, a year. And you, when you go into the airport lounges that are on that list that are a part of that uh, company, your guests still cost like 30 something bucks per person. Okay, in an airport lounge, like let's say United's Airport Lounge or Delta or whatever, it can cost like $59 per person. Some of them children are free and some of them aren't. Okay, so with the Party Select Pass membership card, you can get yourself and two of your guests into the airport lounges that are a part of Priority Select unlimited all year. So long as you have the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, okay, for free. I want to make sure I throw that in. Complimentary, you and two other guests. Now, if you have an authorized user like I do, like I said, which would be my husband, the annual fee for my card is $550, but you can see right there it shows $300 it shows travel credit and it shows that it's per year it shows it right here okay so then you look at it like okay that's like $250 per year that's not too too bad but then when you look at the priority pass and the fact that even the highest uh, membership of that company separately on their own is $469 and your guests still don't get in free now you start to see like okay what $550 if you travel a lot you kind of it's kind of like you're being given money kind of in a way in a sense if you think about it okay but um of course you'd have to travel a lot for this to benefit you okay and this is how you can start traveling a lot right okay so um as you can see when the transaction posts okay so the newest transaction is always at the top and then of course it goes down to the older transaction so as you can see first on June 17th, that $451.23, remember I showed you guys that? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna look at one more time. Okay, I know you guys feel like, no, 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 we see it. Okay, we're gonna look at that, that's first page. Let's see here, that is the second page. Okay, so that's to show you, that is that charge, see? It's right there. Okay, so that posted first, because it's at the bottom. And then the $300 automatically deducts off. That takes it down to $151.23 and you saw everything that was included, okay? Now, first option was what it took it down to when it got to, uh, let me move the pages here really quick and I'll just refocus if I have to. Okay, so this is really important. So. Um, we usually go straight to the airlines and book the flights through them because it's cheaper than going through Chase Travel. And it you can use your other points there. There's no credit card needed. You, if you don't know, you can sign up for the airlines, uh, the actual website like Southwest United, and you get a rewards membership number. Okay, and so you can start adding up your points without even having to have a credit card. But can you imagine if you had both? Okay, Um where you will see where it benefits because with the whole travel thing, it's hotel, it's car rental, it's uh, Uber, Lyft, it's um, limousine. Like when am I ever going to be in a limousine? Weddings, proms, formals, things like that, right? And then it's if you book your travel through a travel agent and you pay with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, your points are worth 50% more, okay? So um, 
I probably had a little bit less than 38, but because I was booking travel, it equaled up to 38. Okay, so I want to make sure that I mention that as well. Okay, so um, right down here where I'm pointing, this actually would have said $52 and some change for the first option, but it did not include, let's go back to, we should be at page one. Okay, let me get that still. Let me get a little focus going on for you guys there. Hopefully that worked. Okay, but... Now, if you're thinking like, wait a second, so it would have been $52 and your $300 annual travel credit would have basically took away that price and you would have had some travel credit left over. Yes, but it would not have included the things you see where the arrow is pointing, which is as the check bags. That was one for each of us. The first one, the carry on, okay, for each of us and the seat for each of us and each of our tickets were exchangeable. Okay, so that's why we went to option two. Okay, so I... I do you want to let you know, like if it had been an airline that didn't charge for all that stuff like Southwest, and I know they're going to start doing, I believe, um, what do you call it, assigned seating, but hopefully they won't start char charging for their seats because Southwest does not charge for your seats. They don't charge for your carry-ons and they don't charge for your first or second check bag so long as you don't go past 50 pounds, okay, per check bag. Okay, so can you imagine if this was a Southwest flight for both of us to go round trip, and it's round trip simply because you're purchasing both of your single tickets at one time, okay? So if you've never flown, it's called round trip because you're purchasing your ticket going and coming at the same time, okay? But they do each have a separate price, okay? So I just want to make sure I mention that well, as well, just in case you've never flown. Okay, so um, yes, if this had been Southwest, it wouldn't have cost anything and I still would have had some travel credit left. Okay, so... Um, let me go back to the last page to make sure I don't miss anything. Like I said, I wanted you guys to see it for yourselves. There it is again. I combined my points. It knocked down the price. And then my travel credits. Again, showing you guys. Uh, knocked off another $300. Okay, and if you don't use it, so what happens if you don't use it? I will tell you that. I'm going to go ahead and angle the camera back up because it feels kind of awkward talking to you guys at this angle. And these are the only pages I have. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and, and get back upright and then we'll continue on. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. I had to make a couple of adjustments and since I had zoomed in a little bit, I had to get it back down to one. I always record in Zoom one or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so um, I showed you guys the papers, like I said, and um, yeah, so the key thing to remember is, is like I said, we never advise people to spend new money. No, we just advise people just change your payment method, what you're paying with. Okay. And I know that you can't make somebody approve you for a credit card. However, if you can get yourself in the door with even a Discover card, okay, you do have to have good credit though with Discover. I'm gonna make sure that I mentioned that. You wanna call them and ask them if your credit is not up to the good mark yet, you know, what cards would be good for you to apply for, okay? So I wanna make sure that you don't just go and apply and then like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I had to have like good credit. Like what's considered good? Okay, so I would call and ask them what would be a credit score? What would be like the minimum that I could have in order to apply and hopefully get approved. Okay, so just probably, I would say do your research before. Okay, so um, yes. Now, before I go into some things you can kind of do if you get denied, okay, um, I'll go into the last half because of course, well, you guys don't know, but we don't live in New Jersey. Okay, so we had to drive to get to Phoenix first. Okay, so I know I was talking about something else before I angled the camera back up. And let me look down here to see if it was on here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to circle back around to it anyway. So I know it was nothing to do with the first page. It was nothing to do with the uh, the second page. And then um, I don't think the third either. Okay, so hopefully I remember what it was. Okay, because I was trying to go in order with the flights first and then go from there. Okay, so um, what I don't have for you guys is the printout from my husband's account. Okay. So he has an American express card. He had points. He used the points to pay for our flight from Phoenix to, um, 
Jersey, that's right, New Jersey, and back. Okay, so again, it was round trip, so it was two tickets for each of us. It was nonstop, and it was on United because Southwest stopped servicing New Jersey in like 2018 or 2019. Okay, so um, we ended up having to fly United, so we faced the same issue. The check bag, the seat, the carry-on for both people going and coming. But he had enough points. I don't know how much he had. I'll be honest with you. I forgot to ask him because I forgot I could probably print this stuff out. Okay. But he had enough points to where he only was charged $40. Yes. And that included, like I said, the seat, the check back for each of us and the carry on for each of us going and coming from Phoenix to New Jersey and, and back. Okay. So he said when he took a look at it, that he thinks it said, um, if you remember correctly, that that was just the taxes. Okay, so that's the other thing. Let's talk about that for a quick second. Your points do not cover the taxes, okay? And that's whether you use your credit card and use your points from your credit card or, okay, or if you have a Chase Sapphire Reserve card, I don't know about the, I think there's one called the Preferred card. There's two Sapphire cards. If you have the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, okay, with the R, which is what I have, they have travel partners, okay? So they have about 10 to 13 travel partners. United and Southwest is one of them. Now, you can transfer your points. They're only worth what they're worth. They're not worth more, but the key thing is they're not worth less, okay? So you can transfer your points from your Chase Sapphire Reserve card to your Southwest airline account, which is free. You just go sign up for it at their website. It's not a credit card, okay? Or to United or one of their other travel partners. And all you need is your rewards number. So for Southwest, it's called Rapid Rewards. And for United, it's called something long like United Plus, um, United Miles Plus something. And then there's the Explorer. There's all these different types of United cards. Okay, and I do know that the United Miles Plus Explore is through Chase. Okay, so they're partnered. Okay, so um, you do not have to have the United credit card from Chase. Okay, remember we're talking about just going to the airline site, signing up, and you'll get what's called a United Miles Plus Explore something uh, number, membership number. Okay, so you are one of the person that lives in your house. You can transfer your points, again, from your Chase Sapphire Reserve card. You go to, I think it's like ways to redeem, ways to use, right? means the same thing. You go to transfer to travel partners. You pick which airline, okay? Because at this point, you're probably going to book your flight directly through Southwest or directly through United's website. So you pick the airline, you pick the person, is it you or the other person? Because one of you might have more points. All you need is their rewards number or your rewards number. And you transfer your points out of Chase Sapphire Reserve over to a reserve. I don't think there's a D over to your account. Okay. In this case, it would have been with United if we had not booked through Chase Travel. Okay. So like I said, all you need to know is how many points do you want to transfer I believe, I want to say it has to be like in increments of, this is kind of hard to explain. I want to say like a thousand. So I want to say, let's say if you have 900 points, I think the most or the least you can have to transfer is a thousand. Okay. And up. And then I think it has to be like, um, I want to say in increments of a thousand, but I could be wrong. Okay. So you might be able to transfer however many points you want. It'll tell you on the page if you have enough points to travel and what the increment is. Okay, is it um, increments of 10, 100, stuff like that. Okay, so it'll tell you. Okay, in a matter of seconds. Okay, should not take longer than a couple of minutes. But literally in a matter of seconds, those points will transfer from your credit card to your airline account. And then whatever your account, the airline account is offering, whether it's Southwest or whether it's United, then you get those perks, okay, from them. Okay, now you still probably would want to pay with your Chase Sapphire Reserve card because travel is worth, I believe it's three points. Okay, so per dollar. Okay, and um, sometimes they have a deal. Okay, so they'll say you earned the three points 
after you use your $300 annual travel credit and know it doesn't roll over if you don't use it or if you don't use a portion of it, it goes away and the following year it resets to $300. Okay, so if I did not mention that, we make sure that I mentioned that as well. Okay, I really wish it rolled over, but it doesn't. Okay, so they'll say, oh, it's after you use your $300 annual uh, travel credit, obviously because you're getting that credit. But sometimes they'll let you use that and still earn points on the, the whole price they got charged. Okay, and then sometimes if it's more than $300, whatever you purchase, your flight, your hotel, whatever uh, type of travel that you purchase, or if it was an event, because you can go to events in that city or state that you're going to or that country, and you can purchase tickets like that to go on tours and things like that. Okay, so if there's anything remaining, the remainder, let's say there's $200 left over, that will earn the points. Whatever it's worth, three points, four points. Okay, so um, yeah, that's the good thing about them. So like I said, that's another way you can combine your points. Okay, so you might only have 10,000 over with Chase Sapphire Reserve, but you might have 20,000 points in United. Well, transfer them right out to yourself. Okay, or if the other person lives in your house and they have more points, transfer it to them. Okay, so there's so many different ways that you can do this, but that's the, the base the basics of it is that you want to have at least one or two good credit cards that earn good points. Okay. That have good benefits that suit your needs. Okay. And the key thing to remember is you want to have a lot of flexibility with your points or your miles or your cash back, whatever you're earning with your credit card. You don't want to be stuck having to go into a certain website and only being able to shop through that website. Okay. So you want to be able to use it for what you want to use it for. Um, okay, so I also said that I was going to go into, oh, okay, so before I forget, let's just say, and I ha I just recently had this happen with the United card. Okay, let's just say you apply for a card and you're denied. You can call what's called the underwriting department. Okay, and if my video is short enough, then I'm going to try and put that above my head somewhere, okay, if I remember to edit that in. Underwriting department. You're like, what is that, Larray? Those are the people that determine whether or not you get approved for a credit card if you get approved for let's say a home loan or a car loan okay those are the people that make the determination so you call you ask to speak to the underwriting department okay and um then they'll say oh if they say they don't have a, a department like that they have to they have to have that or something similar because somebody has to make the decision on whether or not you're approved or not Okay, and if you do it over the weekend, sometimes the computer kind of takes over. And so sometimes it's better to apply during the week. Okay, let's just say just in case the computer automatically denies you so you can call and talk to somebody right away that day. Okay, that way they still have your information, your application number, all types of stuff. You give them like your social, whatever, and they'll be able to pull you up. Okay, and so you tell them that you would like a second review. Okay, so I want to speak to the underwriting department. I recently applied for a credit card and I would like a second review. Okay, so either that person is going to be able to help you or they're going to transfer you to the underwriting department and they're going to ask you questions. Okay, because there's going to be several things. Um, you have your installment loans. You have uh, this on here. They'll ask you about like a certain card. They'll ask you about the amount. They might even ask you, so like, how do you like plan to pay it back? And you might just tell them something like, especially if it is, oh, it's a balance transfer. That's the reason why it wasn't paid off in one lump sum. I consolidated some credit cards. So I'm making payments and I have a zero interest. Oh, okay. If you have a HELOC, if you have a HELOC, if you know what a HELOC is or if you don't, it's a, it's okay, let's see if I can get this right. Home equity uh, line of credit. And sometimes it is in combination with like, let's say your house. Okay, sometimes you have a HELOC like from that, but sometimes you can get a HELOC and you don't have to go into anything that has to do with your house at all. Okay, so I don't know if you have to have a, a house to be able to get a HELOC period and just not even worry about the other loan, anything like that. Like, you know, you don't want to mess with any part of that, no equity in your house, something like that. So ask about the HELOC, but it's very important that the underwriting department knows, especially if it's a large amount that let's say it's 25,000, they're going to think it's an installment loan or like a revolving loan, like where it's like a, a 
everyday credit card or something like that. If it doesn't say it's a car loan or a house loan, they're not going to know it's not what's called, I think, an installment loan. Okay, so you want to make sure that you tell them. They'll say, oh, well, which one's the HELOC? Because they're going to name off numbers to you off your credit report. And you say, oh, the one with the $25,000. they will say, oh, that helps a lot because now we know that, you know, that's, that's totally separate. That falls in a whole separate category on your credit report. Okay, so your HELOC should be marked, but if they're not, make sure you let them know that you have one. Okay, so then they'll say, oh, okay, so, um, well, you know, what about this or what about that? They'll ask you a couple of questions, okay? And so um, just answer them as best you can. If you don't understand what they're asking you, then tell them, like, what, what do you mean? What is that? Okay, um, because they're going to mention, like, debt-to-income ratio. That means that you have more debt than you have income. They're going to explain different things like that. And then they're going to tell you, but they are going to put it in for a second review. They're just going to explain to you if you don't exactly know why, because obviously it'll say, oh, we'll write you in seven to 10 days, right? It doesn't usually tell you. And if you call the application line, it'll just tell you if you're approved or denied. Okay. Sometimes or most times it won't tell you why. So the underwriting department can tell you why. And then you can say, oh, okay, this, and if you have a credit card that you're actually getting ready to pay off in a couple of months, tell them that. Like, I know that credit card, you saw the one with the $8,000 uh, balance, yeah. Okay, that's going to get paid off in a couple of months. Okay, so I'm just waiting for, I don't know, a bonus or whatever. Okay, whatever the case may be, whatever your situation is, just be open to answering the questions and explaining that to them. Try not to get frustrated because it is frustrating. Okay, it's going to feel like, it might feel like you're being picked at. But they just have to sort out everything because if the computer denied you, they're going to be like, oh, it was because of this. Um, and the computer sees it first anyway, so most likely you weren't denied by a person to begin with, okay? So just try and keep that in mind. And so then they'll tell you, they might tell you, oh, it's going to be like uh, maybe two to three days for this review or, you know, something like that. And then the way you know if you got approved is if you log in, if you already, let's say, have a Chase card, like I already had the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, I already had a Chase Freedom Unlimited card. So when I was going for a second review for the United card, I knew that they went ahead and decided to approve it because it showed up with the last four numbers in my account. Okay, um, now another thing that you can ask them to do, this is important, okay? They can take, like if you have a credit card with that company already, they can take part of your credit limit and then they can use part of your credit limit to open up the other card you were denied for. And you can ask them, can they do that? If they're still going to have to say no, can they do that instead? So they're not giving you new credit. Okay, so say your other credit card, your Chase Sapphire Reserve card has a $10,000 credit limit, which is the minimum credit limit if you're approved for that card anyway. Okay, and you want one of these other cards. So they might determine how much they should pull from that other credit line. So they might take 2,000 of your, your credit limit from your Chase Sapphire Reserve card. That will turn into an $8,000 credit card and the other $2,000 will be used to open up the card. Okay, so they can do that. And sometimes the computer, once they go in and recalculate everything, if they run it back through a system or something like that, the computer will tell them, um, you can do this. Like it'll tell them other options. Okay, because like I said, most likely you were denied by the computer first anyway. Okay, so um, you can ask them to do that and then they'll say, okay, if the computer has that suggestion or something like that, if it's in there, you know, it'll, it'll pop up when we run the second review. They'll tell you possibly whether or not it even gave that option to begin with. Okay, so um, at that point, I don't know if they can overwrite it, but I would think they could. They're the underwriting department, but I could be wrong. Okay, so that's how you get around if you're denied. No guarantee that you're going to be approved for the second review, but talk to the underwriting department. Okay, so, um, and I'm telling you this because if you were denied first, okay, let's say like for the Freedom Unlimited, let's say I was actually denied first, right? And then they decide to go ahead and approve me. Any bonus offer, you still get that. So where the Chase Freedom Unlimited card said, if you spend $500 in three months, we'll give you $200. I still qualified for that. Okay, it did not matter that I was denied. Once they approved it, anything that was offered when you applied, it still applies to the card. Okay, so you don't lose any of those new benefits because it's really um, great to be a new customer because new customers get more benefits. Okay, it's um, different than if you just upgrade your card. If you just upgrade a card, 
like with Capital One or whatever. Um, with Chase, you can change which card you have. Be careful. Watch out for if you don't want an annual fee. Make sure you keep in mind if it has an annual fee or not, whatever card you're switching to. Okay, and uh, Capital One, if you you know if you upgrade, it's free to upgrade. But you want to, like I said, keep in mind, does it have an annual fee? And then, because I charge your card every year. And then that you will not get the bonus points. So if you're thinking, oh, if I upgrade, will I get the bonus points that they offer the new customers? No, it's only offered to the new customers. Okay, so that's why I tell people if you have one or two credit cards, you may find you're going to see that bonus offer. And you're going to think, okay, so how many credit cards can I have with this one company? I thought it was only two. I found out I now have three with Chase. So um, sorry about that. My voice is going out. But yeah, I was like, oh, really? I asked because I didn't want to be denied simply because I already had two cards with that company. I didn't want Chase to deny me. So um, they denied me for one the reason. Like I said, between going to the underwriting department, they went ahead and they, they took it from a card I didn't want them to. I did request a specific card, but I know why they took the um, part of my credit limit for my Chase Sapphire Reserve versus my Freedom Unlimited is because my Freedom Unlimited had a higher balance. And the higher the balance you have, the um, more debt to income ratio you have. Okay. And the more obviously your credit score goes down. And so uh, if your credit limit gets lowered, your debt to income ratio goes up, your credit score goes down. Okay. So my Chase Sapphire Reserve card barely had a balance. And so they took credit from that to open up the United card. And then now we're in the bonus uh, part of it. Okay. So, um, I don't look at it as there's no way we're going to spend $3,000 in three months because we all know that is very possible because you're just changing what you're paying with. Okay. Not what you're buying. Okay. So, um, now on to New Jersey and, uh, Phoenix, Phoenix to New Jersey, and then New Jersey back to Phoenix. Um, Okay, so come to think of it, no, we discussed that already. We did. We did. We already went over that. Okay, so I know there was something else when I was adjusting the camera back up, and I told you that we would kind of talk about it. So I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure I did not cover it. I, I don't remember what it was. I just, I feel like I still forgot it. Okay, but that is the basics. That's how it, how it works. It's repetition. It's building up points with a credit card. I don't feel comfortable applying for a credit card right now. Okay, build up points with the airlines, the hotels. Let's touch on that for a second. Same thing. I'll use Choice Hotels as an example because that's a good one to use an example of. You go to choicehotels.com, you sign up for the account. The account is free. It is not a credit card. Every time you book your hotel, if it falls under Choice Hotels, like um, the Choice Suites, I think there's Choice comfort in so there's comfort suites and comfort in okay within the choice network then same thing you log into that account then you book your hotel okay because you might have some points choice you might stay two nights and they offer a free night every two nights you stay the points add up and then you go into the different types of membership like platinum gold sapphire stuff like that whatever it's called there's different parts of um of choice hotels. Okay. But it is free. It's not a credit card. You just go straight to their website and you sign up and you get a rewards number. Okay. So, um, you can build it up there and then you can say, you know what? Okay. Well, I'm going to pay for the hotel with the Chase Sapphire reserve card or whatever your travel card is because of the points you get on the purchase. Yeah. So you're going to get points for booking in your hotel account, the, the free account, and you're going to get whatever points the credit card because you use the credit card to pay. Okay, so there's, you know, different categories. There's uh, restaurants and groceries and gas, things like that. Okay, so now you've got your points sitting in both places. Now you ask yourself, hmm, is that a partner? Can I transfer that to that? And if not, uh, Chase, Travel, is partnered with, uh, what's it called, IGH, IHG, I don't know because I don't usually stay in the, the hotels, um, but whatever falls underneath that, they call them the luxury hotels, they're partnered with them as well. Okay, so you might find that you might be able to transfer your points for your Chase Sapphire Reserve card to one of those, one of your hotel accounts, 
Okay, so you just check what under whatever it is, IHG or IGH. I don't remember at this point because I've never done it. Okay, so um, yeah, you have that as well. Okay, so now you're like, can, can it get any better than this? Yes. I have videos about Rakuten and CapitalOneShopping.com. I won't go into it too far. I will just tell you this. It's the same concept. You sign into your Rakuten account. Okay, you look and see. There might be JetBlue. I know Hotels.com is on there. If you have a Hotels.com account, it's free. It's not a credit card. You just go to that website and sign up. Um, and then I don't think Trivago's on there, but I believe Expedia might be. And then you go to that website from Rakuten and then you make your purchase as you normally would. Okay, because most likely by now you've signed up for their separate accounts. And then you use the credit card that you get the most points on miles or cash back to pay for the purchase. Okay, now the CapitalOneShopping.com, you go to that website, you sign up. And then on your cart, on that page, there should be an icon of S. And in my video, I have an extended tutorial and I have a short tutorial that shows you how to get that little icon up there, that uh, S, I think, what, what is it called? And there's another word for it besides icon, extension, to get the extension, that little S up there. So just in case it doesn't say, hey, there's some codes on this website and it's offering you know, some cash back. Um, do you want us to try the codes in Yes, the code worked or no, the code didn't. Or if there was a code, but your code is better, put it back in, like especially if you're at Macy's. And then it, it'll activate the cash back for Capital One Shopping. And then you check out. And you check out with what? Again, the credit card where you get the most points and the, or most miles are cash back with. You pay with that. So you stack all of your cash back, your miles, and uh, your points. It all turns into money. Okay, and if you have a Discover card, you can send your miles. Okay, the Discover It is a miles card. And then there's a Discover Cash Back card. It turns into dollars and then you can transfer it to your bank account. Okay, so if you get approved for a Discover credit card, either of those, the It, which is the miles card, it's very simple. You earn 1.5 miles times whatever your purchase is. There's no special categories. There's no, oh, you earn more if you make this purchase. It's very simple. It's just 1.5, uh, I believe, miles times the dollar. Okay, and then you can use it to shop in Amazon. It doesn't lose value. If you use your Chase Sapphire Reserve card to shop in Amazon, your points are going to lose value. Okay, so I personally don't use any of my points to shop in Amazon because that card, the Sapphire Reserve card, is specifically for travel. This new United card, I'm still learning about it, is specifically for travel. Okay, and then within those airlines... Now, this is where it, it might cost. It might cost you, like, let's say, 30 bucks to transfer, like, a 1,000 points or something like that. I think that's with United. But you're going straight through the airline. So you're like, wait a second. I can go straight into the airline account, not the credit card account, straight into the airline account directly with the, the airline, and I can transfer my points to someone else? Yes. But at that point, it might cost you. Now, if you are... Um, Let's say buying points, they might give you a discount. Normally, it might cost, let's say, 20 bucks to get, let's say, 20,000 points, but they might only charge you $10 to get that. Okay, because you're trying to add up more points while you're booking the flight within the airline's website. Okay, so you can buy points as well within the airline website. But yes, you should be able to transfer your points to someone else. I know you can do it with United, and I can't remember if you can do it with Southwest. Like I said, they might have more points. So they might be doing the airline and then with your card, let's say if, if it is Chase Sapphire Reserve, you might be taking care of the hotel because you get more for your points and the hotel prices are closer or sometimes cheaper than the hotel website. So you just do a comparison. Is it cheaper to go do Chase Travel where my points are worth 50% more or is it cheaper to go through the hotel website or is it cheaper to go through the airline website? Because you got to get there somehow, right? Okay, so that is pretty much how we do it. Okay, so I showed you on paper. The points add up. And you can, if you can transfer them to yourself and get them into one of your other accounts, do it. 
Because you might say, oh, I only got 2,000 points here. I only got 3,000 points. I only got like 4,000 points here. But if you can get them all in the same place, it's still the same total. But now you have it all in one spot to knock off more of the price. And if not, do what we did. And when we went to Rome, I'll tell you guys really quick, I had two credit cards that one had points and one had miles. So we purchased one airline ticket on one card, on my Capital One card. And then we purchased the other airline ticket, I believe on my TS Sapphire Reserve card because I had just got it and I was still learning about it. Okay, and then um, of course, I made my husband an authorized user with Chase Sapphire Reserve. It's only $75 annually, you know, per year. But remember, priority select pass. Okay, so going back to that, if I did not mention that, that's very important. Chase Sapphire Reserve, you're the account holder. Okay, yes, $550 is a lot until you saw it. I told you about the $300 annual travel credit. I showed it to you. I told you about priority select pass. If you go to their separate website, what their different memberships cost. And you still can't get your guests in for free. So why not jump and see if you can get this other credit card? And then, um, like the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you're, like I said, so your authorized user is $75 for their card every year. But they get that Priority Select Pass membership as well. Them, that person, and two people can get into the airport lounges for free, unlimited, every year that you still have your credit card. The account holder still has the credit card. And just like any other card, you know, it might last for like, let's say four years and they'll send you a new one because it expired, right? And then you just get a new one in the mail. This is your, your new expiration date and something like that. So don't panic because you're going to see an expiration date on your party pass select membership card, but you're going to get another one. Okay. So I think every four years they'll send you another one. So long as that credit card is still open and in good standing, you will keep that membership. And that's very important because in the airport lounge, like I said, again, even if I mention I'm a mission again, you can, some of you can eat for free and some of them have like free drinks as well, including alcohol. If you like wine, you know, champagne, um, if you like, let's say rum and Coke or whatever. Um, we recently did that and that lounge I think belonged to United, but it was within the party pass select membership. Like it was within their company. It was like affiliated with them. So we went into a United airport air lounge and to get in, I heard them tell somebody it was $59.99 per person. So when you think about the complimentary food, the free food and the free drinks, free what? If you had to pay to get into the airport lounge, no, it wasn't. It wasn't free. No, when I hear free and I think free and I see free, there's supposed to be a zero dollar amount there. Okay, that's my mind thought. So I'm like, mm-mm. Now, it's better than paying for, let's say, if the food costs as well, because sometimes the food is not free. But in those places, sometimes, let's say, there might be a $28 credit per meal per person. So if your meal is less than $28, your meal would still end up being free. Okay, and then some of these places with the free food and stuff like that and the free drinks, it's a buffet. It might be small. It might not be, you know, it's not going to be like Golden Corral, you know, with all the options, but I mean... It's something. It's better than a bagel and then a muffin, unless that's what you want. Okay, so um, I always look at that. Not only how can we travel for free or travel for a very low cost, but how can we eat for free or eat for a very low cost? Okay, and like I said, if you have other people traveling with you, it comes in handy if they have not started themselves off on everything that I'm telling you here. Like, let's say you're like, you know what? I really sat down and listened to you. I went and I looked at each card. I came back to your video. I had to watch it more than once. But I started. Um, and like you said, if nothing else, um, there are other credit cards where you get the party pass membership. But Chase is the only one I know of with the Sapphire Reserve card where you and two of your guests, keep in mind two instead of one, because most of them it's only one, get in free. Whereas if you go with, let's say, a U.S. bank card where you get the priority pass membership, it may not have the same benefits. It may cost you. It just might be at a discounted price for you and your guests. And then I believe Venture X. I believe you get the priority pass like membership with that as well. And I can't remember. Now, keep in mind, though, the annual fee for that is $495, I believe, if I remember correctly. So you want to look at, okay, this is the annual fee. What benefits... In their monetary value, okay, their money value 
start to make that angle fee not look so bad? What am I getting? Am I getting anything else that's worth any money so I can say, well, actually, it's only $200 annual fee when I look at it because this is worth this much. This is what I would have spent if I did not have this credit card. Okay, but like I said, um, I believe that they were the same as Chase Sapphire Reserve, but don't quote me on that, okay, because um, I just simply don't know. Venture X is something that it's not new, but it's new to me. Okay, with Capital One, I'm the Quicksilver or whatever, the Venture One or whatever, whichever ones don't have the annual fee. Um, I don't really use them that much anymore. So, of course, they lowered my credit limit because they said, oh, we want to put it to fit your needs. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to be charging on the card every single month. And they lowered my credit limit. So, with Capital One, you got to be careful. Okay, so I'm not saying there's not some great cards with them. But if you're not using it, then they will have a tendency to lower your credit limit. And then you got to be careful because if you're not using it, um, let's say every two to three months, or let's say every six months or something like that, you know, gas or, you know, you went to Walmart or something like that, then the card might even be closed by that company. Okay, so if you're wondering, just really quick, if you have that question, is it true that you have to use your credit cards every month? No, no, it's just, just that some companies are stricter than others. So Capital One is very strict. Okay, because what they're looking at is if you're not using the credit, if someone else gets approved, then they can use part of that credit for that person. Okay, so um, they're kind of tied to what they promise you, right? And that's how each of the credit cards are. So if your credit limit is 5000 I think I don't know how much credit they can give overall to their customers. But what they're looking at is you can use up to that 5000 And if you're not using it, what if someone else qualifies and let's say they notice that they do. Okay, so I don't know. I don't think they'll just go and take your credit, part of your credit limit and give it to them. But I think that's what they look at. Okay, is that it's promised to you. And so they just want to make sure like it's fair for everybody, basically. It's the only way I can think of to put it. Um, except for, you know, when you look at it from your standpoint, from my standpoint was, okay, but I feel like you're penalizing me. Okay, I, was, I got to the point where I finally was able to pay off that credit card every single month. And every six months, they were raising my credit limit $3,000 um, on their own every six months. I wasn't asking for any credit limit increase. So when they knocked me back down, I was like, whoa, wait a second. And then it made me not want to even have their card as an everyday card anymore. And then it was just a matter of you never wanted to close. So that's the last thing I'm going to tell you is you never want the creditor to close your credit card. And the next thing you don't want to do is you don't want to close your credit card yourself. Okay, because when you lose the credit that you have available, because you might not have a balance, your debt to income ratio goes up. Yeah, your uh, credit is like the main part of it is your credit cards and your credit lines. Some banks offer a credit line where you may not have a card and some of them they do give you a card but it's a line of credit it's not a, a credit card but it all falls under credit okay you're like i say your car loan your house loan that's separate okay so i'm not saying that that doesn't end your student loans that i'm not saying that like that doesn't um and not what well, i'm thinking let me say i said student loans but let me take that back no 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 they do show up on there okay so um those affect your credit differently than your credit cards and your line of credit okay um you can have a couple things going on some couple missed payments or something like that and you're trying to get a house or trying to get a car or whatever and they might be able to bypass and overlook certain things because it's not even really a factor when you're applying for those other types of loans okay and other types of credit okay so that's basically like i said how we do it um and it's just it becomes repetition i tell myself Especially when I calculated what we missed out on so far, even if you do it with just your groceries, like with the whole credit card thing, or even if you want to start with the airlines and with the hotels, because those are free and those are not credit cards. Okay, you want to start booking your travel. You, you're you booking with them probably anyway, and you might be booking as a guest. You might as well book as a member. Okay, so even if you want to start there first and say, you know what, she's right, I do have a credit card, and you know what, um, I got really good at paying it off every month. 
But I think now, because I've gotten so good at that, you might say to yourself, you know what? Okay, whatever I was going to spend today, I can set that aside. It was going to come from the bank account anyway, right? Or from some cash you have or whatever, you know, um, wherever, however you store your money and stuff like that. So you might be able to say, okay, I'm going to set it aside for that specific amount for that specific purchase. And still, it's going to be paid off because that's all I charge on that card for that month or for that week. Okay, so um, you will find that you'll get really, really good at it. Like, really, really good. Okay, um, and like I said, so the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, I like it. The $300 annual travel credit really helps a lot. And it's on the, like, the angle of the anniversary of, like, when you first got approved for the card. And um, when we got approved, we used it for rum. And so, same thing. They said, hey, you got to spend almost, like, $4,000 in three months. I had braces at the time. Um, like I said, utility, cell phone, all that stuff. We just started chunking everything toward that card because we were paying on that stuff anyway. And so, the bonus points... You know, you get them, let's say it was like, let's say 60000 But you're booking for travel, so it's worth 50% more. So when we went to Rome back in 2018 or 2019, we had enough points to where that, it was like seven or eight, it was like seven to nine days. It covered the whole thing. And then also, I oh, I forgot. Okay, so in Chase Travel, you can look for hotels or apartments in different places. So in Rome or like overseas, you might want to check. Uh, apartments in that area and so you might be able to uh, rent an apartment instead of a hotel because you might find when you go across seas that the hotel is kind of small and if you guys saw any of my videos if you guys saw my short um i do want to make sure i mention okay so i know i called it a bathroom i called it a bathroom because on the other side it only shows very shortly there is a shower okay so the the, it's like a short or like a one minute something uh, video that I had of me showing the space I had to, you know, to sit on the toilet. There is a shower in there. That's why I said bathroom and not someone said, oh, washroom. No, it, it had a shower in there and a shower in a bathtub qualifies it as a bathroom. OK, so that was the bathroom in our hotel room. I want to make sure that I let you guys know that because, yes. Okay, you go to Paris, you go get a hotel, you go to Rome, you go for a hotel, it's going to be small. Okay, the bathroom might be just that small. So you might as well check to see for an apartment before you even go to Airbnb. With Chase Travel, at least look for apartments in that area as well. Okay, so I do want to make sure that I mention that you don't always have to book a hotel through Chase Travel. Okay, so, um, but the concept, the idea, the way you do it, this the set uh, steps that you do. Okay, um, is the same. It's the same no matter what you're using. And your whole thought process, my points, my cash back, my miles turn into money. And then what do I want to use that money for? And in this case, this is talking about travel. So this is what we do for travel. Um, so the only thing we ended up having to pay for was the $100 Euro, uh, euros. And it had to be in euros. Okay, so I think... Check out AAA if you want to uh, change your uh, U.S. dollar to some other currency. Okay, so I know you might get a better rate or something like that. Um, and then it was a, a two-bet a split wing. And so the only thing I'm not sure about, because like I said, I searched for apartments in Rome in the Chase Travel, is if another person or another couple was with us, if it would have been another 100 euros or if it was 100 euros per unit, like per apartment. So since that apartment was a two um, bed, one bath, then if as long as the group was within that apartment, you see what I'm saying? If it would only have been 100 euros, okay? So I believe she said it was like per group, okay? So I think that's what she told me, but don't quote me on that. You can check and see. Okay, so... Um, I would say we're not out of time. I have a lot of time today to record. That's why I went ahead and made this video. But um, you guys, I know your time is valuable and um, it is hot up in here. Okay, you guys know my AC sounds like a jet when it's on, like two jets actually. It's super, super loud. 
and it has gotten really hot in here. The lights are making that thing hotter in here. Um, my voice is barely hanging on by thread. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and say thank you for watching Upfront and Honors Reviews. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And I'll try to answer them as best I can. And um, as always, stay safe. And once again, no, it does not cost thousands and thousands of dollars to travel, especially if you're going overseas. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And then um, London, check out the house boats. Yeah, I think they're like three bed, two baths. The reason why I'm mentioning that, because if I did not mention that, it would have been uh, $155 for the like eight or nine days or whatever that we were there. Because we took a bullet chain train to Paris, which only takes two hours. And we stayed over there for a couple of days, did some tours, and then took the bullet train back to London. But yeah, in London, they have these things called houseboats. Okay, so I told my husband, he goes, you want to stay on the water? I said, was it going to stay by the dock? Yes. Was it going to stay tied to the dock? He said, yes. I said, so was it going to be floating out in the middle of the water? He said, no. I said, oh, excuse me. I said, I'm getting ready to start coughing. I said, if you had told me that it was $155 for that whole entire time we were there, then we would have been staying on that boat. Three bed, two bath, we would have been on that boat because the Airbnb is what kind of hit us with the price. So if I had known that, one more time, say it with me. We would have been on that boat for $155 for the whole week, including what it costs for us to get there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. We would have done that. Okay, so now at least I know it's there just in case we go back. Hopefully, they'll still have that. And hopefully, they keep up the maintenance and stuff like that on them because it's kind of scary to be like on the water. But like I said, if the dock's right there, I'm okay. Okay, so I'm going to see you guys later, and I um, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.